Is everyone ready? Let's get ready for chemistry! Ah! Let's look at the mechanics of dimensional analysis. If we have 5 over x, where x is 5, then we can do a substitution. We can take x, but x is 5, and we can plug in 5 for x, and what we get is 5 over 5. What is that? Well, it's 1. Why? Because anything divided by itself is 1. Let's look at another problem. We have x over 5 times 5 over 2. What is the answer? Well, <laughs> x times 5 over 5 times 2 is the same thing as 5 times x over 5 times 2 because multiplication is commutative. Since multiplication is commutative, we can rearrange it so that it's 5 over 5, which makes 1. Anything divided by itself is 1. And so the answer here is x over 2. So the mechanics of dimensional analysis is that we're making 1. OK, we can rearrange this. x over x times 6 over 6 times y over y. x over x is 1. 6 over 6 is 1. y over y is 1. So the answer to this is 1. It's not zero. They didn't all go away. They didn't all cancel. They all made one. So what we say is the six cancels with the six. The six on top cancels with the six on the bottom because multiplication is commutative. The y on top cancels with the y on the bottom because they made one. And anything times one is itself, so there's really a one there. And the x on top cancels with the x on the bottom. And so the answer to this is 1. Now, this doesn't have to work with x's and y's and numbers. This works with everything. Anything divided by itself is 1. So an apple divided by an apple is 1. They don't go away. They make 1. And anything times 1 is itself. So for all intents and purposes, they go away. We call that unit canceling. A cat over a cat cancel. Where does it go? I don't know. There's the word cat. It doesn't mean we like killed the cat and ate its liver. It just means that they canceled. And we're left with a cow over a horsey. And so the answer here is a cow per Horsey. What does that mean? I don't know, and it doesn't really matter to me. That's the answer. The answer is cow per horsey. The units canceled, and that's what was left. Let's look at this problem. 6,500,000 seconds, what is that in terms of months? So we're going to start with 6,500,000 seconds. And we're going to put a bunch of ratios in here that are going to make the units cancel and switch this to months. What do we know? We know that for every 60 seconds, there's one minute. Now, if we take 60 seconds and we divide it by one minute, what do we get? Well, you can do a substitution. Wherever you see 60 seconds, you can plug in one minute. And that gives you one minute over one minute. And one minute over one minute is one. So what's the point of doing that then? Mathematically speaking, when you take 60 seconds and you put it over one minute, you haven't done anything because this ratio is 1. This is true because the two quantities are equal to each other. So if you take two things that are equal and you turn them into a ratio, you have a conversion. I can take this conversion and I can plug it in. So if I draw some lines here, 
some convertering lines. I can get the units to cancel if seconds are on top and seconds are on the bottom, seconds will cancel e with each other. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to plug it in. I'm going to plug it in so that it's one minute over 60 seconds. Now, if you have 60 seconds over one minute, that's one. But if you have one minute over 60 seconds, that's one. And so one divided by one is still one. But if you take the inverse of one, you still get one. So if you take these equalities and you write them as a ratio, you can flip it upside down or right side up. It doesn't matter. It's still one. What we've done is we've taken 6,500,000 seconds and we've multiplied it by one. So mathematically speaking, we haven't done anything. However, 60 seconds over 60 seconds is one. And now we're in units of minutes. So now we know how many minutes there are in 6.5 million seconds. And that's not nothing. Where can we go from here? We can say that one hour is 60 minutes. We can say that. And so if we make a ratio out of that, it will be one, but we can use it to change our units. So if we take one hour and divide it by 60 minutes, the minutes cancel. What we've done is we've multiplied it by one, so mathematically we haven't changed anything, but now we're in units of hours. Now what can we do? Well, there's 24 hours in one day. That is a true statement. We can turn this into a ratio. There's 24 hours in one day. How do I plug that in so that units cancel? Well, if I've got hours on top, then I need to put hours on the bottom so that they'll cancel. I'm going to set this ratio up so that hours are on the bottom. I'll put one day over 24 hours, and the hours will cancel, and now I'm in days. Now what? What can I do with days? Well, I've already forgot what I was trying to find in this problem. So let's go back to the problem and look at what we're trying to find. We're trying to find months. How do you convert days into months? Well, there's between 30 and 31 days in a month. So let's just say that 30 days is one month. That's a ratio, and we're going to plug it in. And we'll say that 30 days is one month. And now, oh. Days don't cancel with months. It's only when something is divided by itself that it cancels. So we've written this wrong. It shouldn't be 30 days over one month. It should have been one month over 30 days so that days will cancel with days, so that days on top will cancel with days on the bottom, and we'll be left with months on top which is what I wanted, and now I know I'm done. So dimensional analysis is about looking at the units and making the units work out. And now I'll do the math. Now I'll get a calculator and I'll say 6.5 million seconds divided by 60, divided by 60, divided by 24, divided by 30 is 2.5 months. So apparently there's two and a half months in 6.5 million seconds. Let's look at another problem. We want to convert 16.2 yards into meters. I'll be honest with you. I don't know how many yards are in a meter. Now I could Google it, but that's not the point. The point is to convert it using dimensional analysis. So we'll start with 16.2 yards.
We'll draw some converti lines. The only way that I know to convert imperial into metric is to convert inches into centimeters. I know that one inch is 2.54 centimeters. But I'm in yards, so I can't use that conversion yet. I do know, however, that there's three feet in one yard. So we'll plug that in so that yards cancel. We'll want to put yards on the bottom and feet on top so that yards will cancel with yards and we'll be left with feet. Feet are not especially helpful unless I can turn them into inches. I know that for every one foot there's 12 inches. I can set that up as a ratio. 12 inches divided by one foot is one because they're the same thing and anything divided by itself is one. How do I want to plug that in here? Feet are on top. I want to put feet on the bottom so that feet will cancel with feet. So let's put one foot on the bottom and when you do that you have to put the 12 inches on top. Feet cancel with feet. We're left with inches. I know how many inches there are in centimeters. For every one inch there's 2.54 centimeters. Inches cancel with inches leaving me with centimeters but that's not meters. I know that there's a hundred centimeters in one meter. I know that. So if I put a hundred centimeters on the bottom, I can put one meter on top. Centimeters cancel with centimeters, leaving me with meters, which is the unit that I was looking for. So I would say 16.2 times 3 times 12 times 2.54 divided by 100 is 14.8 meters. And I never would have known that if I hadn't set up my units to cancel. So this is dimensional analysis. This is how you get units to cancel to give you the th units of the thing that you're looking for. Anything divided by itself is 1. So you set it up so that what's on top cancels with what's on the bottom. You're the one with the power to decide what goes on top and what goes on the bottom. So if you're canceling your units, you'll know if you're doing it right or not. Is everyone ready? Let's get ready for chemistry! Ah!